Yeah, g'day. So far, I've only ever done arc welding, but I have watched a lot of YouTube videos about TIG welding. So what do you think of the chances of me learning to TIG weld in about an hour using just the internet to help me out? Mail time. This is a huge box. I can't remember ordering anything. Oh, you've got to be kidding. It's a whole welder. Who sent this? Maybe there's a letter in here somewhere. Stamos welder. I don't see a letter in here. There's no name on it. So there it is, a Stamos S-Multi-180H, which can obviously do MIG, TIG or stick. Although my guess is whoever sent this to me is one of the many, 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 many people who are offended by my stick welding and want to see me learn MIG or TIG. We got our wire feed speed and voltage for MIG welding. I guess this is the amperage for TIG welding and stick. I'm assuming as a DC machine, it's positive ground, negative to the TIG torch with separate gas and switching. So I guess you could use a foot switch if you wanted there. Not quite sure what that means. Both of these are for MIG by the looks of them. Coming around the side. Okay, this wire is much springier than I would have expected. Did any of you guys ever waste your entire first roll of welding wire because you simply couldn't control it? I kind of got the feeling that that's going to happen to me. Moving around to the back, it's just an on off switch and then your two gas inputs. So you could leave the machine set up with a separate gas for TIG and MIG. I really don't have space for two gas bottles so I'm just going to use argon for both and switch them over as necessary. So whoever it was, thank you very much. I need to get a gas bottle for this and learn how to use it. Get some projects going. Thanks very much. Well it's now been a couple of days. Looking at the comments section of last week's video, Alexander Graff asked did I get Argon yet? So thanks very much Alexander. This is a very generous gift to the channel. I really appreciate it. It's going to get a lot of use. So what comes in the box? Well, there's a ground clamp uh, and an electrode holder. There's also a MIG torch and a tool for changing the tips. As you can see in the comments from Alexander, he bought this machine because it's a high frequency start TIG. And there's a bunch of TIG hardware here as well. One sixteenth of an inch tungsten electrode, three gas lenses, sizes four, five and six. And there's another little spanner there as well. Now I've never done this before, so I have no idea which gas lens you use, but I'm going to guess it's like the three little piggies. Maybe it was the three bears. Too hot, too cold and just right. There's no wrenching flats on this side, so I'm going to assume that it's supposed to be hand tight. So this is the collet. Let's throw that in the back, I guess. Now the user manual for this machine is kind of interesting in that it has basically one and a half pages of information and it's all generic. It's just basic safety. Kind of reminds me a little about 
when I was in the Air Force, before you could touch an aircraft, you had to do the four zeros course on that aircraft. And the four zeros course was basically just teaching you how to be safe around the plane, how not to kill yourself and all of your colleagues. You know, things like hydraulic safety, ejection seats, electrical safety, all that sort of thing. And that's all there is in this manual. But in the box they also provide this quick guide with a QR code, so let's see what that has to say. It's the same manual. Just at the back, MIG MAG torch gas nozzle gas distributor current nozzle tip adapter blowpipe neck. Okay, that's nice. It's one piece of information, but otherwise, that's it. I guess there's two ways of thinking about this. On the one hand, if you're going to buy a complicated welder, you probably should already know how to weld. And the other thing is, even if this had a whole bunch of information on how to set up the weld, you know, feeds and speeds and voltages and whatever else it should have, who goes reading the manual anyway? That's what YouTube's for, right? In some ways it's probably good. Save some wasted paper, just give you a safety instruction, and you can go and find out how to use the thing on the internet. Now before I can do anything with this tungsten, I need to sharpen it. I also pulled the tungsten out of the TIG torch of the other welder I was using. I'll just try that out. This is a red one, this is a yellow, grey. I need to look up what the difference is. Since I've already got a diamond wheel set up on my Klaxon tool grinder, I guess I'll use that for grinding the tungstens. I don't think you're supposed to breathe tungsten dust, so I'll put on a decent mask. Remember, I've never done this before, so feel free to critique any aspect of what I'm doing in the comment section below. I'd appreciate your help. Mail time. From what I've heard, here in Austria it's getting harder and harder to get purchased bottles refilled. I bit the bullet, I've gone for a rental bottle. This is a 10 year rental from the tool company Sconce. 300 euro and it gives you a 10 year rental. Well, the first filling's included. You never have to pay for a hydrostatic test. It's about 58 euro to switch it out for a full bottle of Argon. I guess I got the wrong regulator, huh? Well, it's now Saturday afternoon. Too late to do anything about getting another one of those. So, I'm screwed. I wonder if this is gonna work or if I'm gonna have to send a second regulator back. Cause this one, the fascia is kind of lifted up. I'm kind of guessing that the needle's gonna stick to it, but I guess we'll try it out. I'd like to thank Evsol, uh, Nicholas at Auto Labs, S Steve Goodine, and all of my Patreons for their assistance in getting this gas bottle as well. Okay, well that's not leaking, that's good. Looks like I can't set it until it's flowing. But there's no flow through the welder either, that's good. So there must be some sort of functioning gas valve in the welder. Okay, for DC TIG, do I need ground positive or ground negative? What does the internet say? All DC TIG welding is done DC polarity, where the torch is negative and the earth is positive. Well, here we go then. Quite short leads on this uh, machine. It's only about a one and a half meter earth lead. Now since grinding this uh, needle, I've looked up and found that it probably should be a more acute angle, a four to one taper. Probability is that I touch this off into the work within about, I don't know, five seconds of starting. Probably not gonna make that much of a big difference for the first shot. Okay, while the power and earth cables are pretty short, the actual handpiece cable's quite long, probably four meters. Okay, that's pretty nice. The collets actually have the size printed onto them. They gave three in the set with the other two being the 332nd and the 2mm. But for the tungsten I've got, it's uh, 1 16th I need. So how much stick out do we need? So what does the internet say? 1 to 3 times the diameter of the electrode. 
So if the tape is supposed to be one to four, then I guess you just go to about there. Now to start with, I'm just going to practice laying down a few beads. And I've got this uh, six millimeter, quarter inch plate, where I've got a few machining marks into it. So that will have taken off the mill scale. Don't have any acetone at the moment, so I'm cleaning this with alcohol. Also clean my filler rod. So how many amps do we need? With well, a 1 16th, I guess we'll start off with 100. So we're on process TIG. We want about 100 amps. Now if I push the trigger, do I get gas flow? Okay, I need to check that flow meter. The gas flow I already looked up should be about 5 litres per minute. Okay, so I want 5 litres per minute. Okay, uh, as I was afraid, this gauge sticks. Okay, let's call that 6 litres per minute. Right, well, here goes nothing. Okay. Right, I touched the needle to the metal, so that's probably already a dead needle. Well, the welder obviously works. Now I've got to learn to control it. Switch out the electrode, that'll need a grind. Oh wow, I can understand why people think this is a very controllable process. Nice. Since I really don't know what I'm doing, let's try again with a bit of filler rod. That trigger's pretty sensitive, you barely need to touch it. Alrighty, look at that, a perfect stack of dimes. What is a dime anyway? Guess it's not as easy as I thought. Tip looking like this probably means march to the grinder of shame, right? Right, I've just taken a break just to let the metal cool down. I can see I'm going to have to start practicing in front of the TV that technique of like walking the filler rod out between your fingers. Haven't got that down yet. Haven't got anything down yet. <laughs> Hands up, if you ever forgot to turn on your gas bottle after taking a break. Hey old Tony, get that hand up. Just laying down beads like that's kind of fun. Shame it's not really what you're supposed to be doing. Well that tip needs another regrind. Whoops, hit my electrode with filler rod. What do you guys think of 2.5 millimeter filler rod for 100 amps? I'm wondering whether I might be using something too thick. I have to confess, I forgot to order a filler rod. So all I did was take a two and a half millimeter electrode, it's a 6011, and just took the flux off it and polished it up. I've also got some 6013s in whatever size that is, 1.5 millimeters or so. It's thinner anyway. So I'll take the flux off that, clean it up, see if I can get a bit of better uh, bead with that. Oh, 
got a nasty inclusion in that one. I wonder if I touch the tip. Well that sure is a butt ugly weld. If I pull the electrode back too far, it adds more heat to the mill. Is that correct? So this is still at 120 amps, going a bit slower, so I seem to be getting more penetration now. Not sure if that's good or bad though. That's the problem with trying to teach yourself this stuff from the internet. You don't have the feedback of someone experienced to say, nah, that's crap, try this. Go back down to 100 amps. Welding's a real muscle memory thing, kind of like playing guitar. I think I need to lay down another one, maybe 2,000 meters of beads before I'll get any good at this, if at all. On this bead I tried to get funky with a weaving pattern. Well I can't speak for anybody else, but for me there's no way I'd be able to do this well in one afternoon. None of my beads look consistently the same, and I haven't even started welding two bits of metal together or doing V-joints, butt welds and all the other sort of things you need to do. But I'm sick of taking the flux off electrodes. I thought they had TIG wire at the local hardware store, but they didn't, so I'll have to order a box. From what you guys have seen, please give me feedback, give me critique, because obviously i got a lot to learn here. Thanks very much. And especially a huge thank you to Alexander Graff and everyone who contributed to the uh, gas bottle. Thanks very much. See you again next week.